Now, one thing WWE has traditionally done throughout their history, even going back to the days of being WWF, is at WrestleMania, at certain moments in time, they found a way to have the biggest names, the biggest icons, the biggest stars of that time ultimately face off at WrestleMania, try to generate the most interest, uh, draw the most money, have the biggest buzz-generating match possible. And it's been a successful formula for the company over the years. Hogan and Piper at one, Hogan Andre at three, Hogan Savage at five, Hogan Warrior at six. You can even go to WrestleMania 12 and you look at uh, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 13, Austin and Bret, and 14, Austin and Michaels. You look at the three matches between Austin and The Rock at 15, 17, and 19. You, know, you look at even matches like uh, Batista versus John Cena. You look at The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels twice. The Undertaker versus Triple H got himself three times ugh. You know, and there are other examples of this. But that's one of those things, you know, Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels. You've, you, over the years, have had these big special attraction type of what would happen matches. And in a lot of cases, not all of them necessarily, but I just brought some of them up because they were huge name attractions like Hogan Rock at 18. But you look at those matches, and these were arguably the two biggest stars or the two biggest names in the territory, in the company at the time, the, the two biggest money draws, the two uh, biggest names, you know, it... It's been a formula, like I said, that's really, really worked well for the WWE. And it's really, really worked well for WrestleMania. And as I start to look ahead to WrestleMania 33, you know, there's some real warning signs to me, as I've talked about previously in the video, that this WrestleMania 33 card is really starting to shape up to look like doo-doo. With a couple of tweaks, this thing could be really, really good in my eyes. But as it stands right now, a doo-doo. <laughs> doo-doo. So, in a never-ending effort in 2017 to hashtag make wrestling fun again, I gotta figure out a way to help the WWE solve this WrestleMania 33 card problem. And I've got it. I've got the solution. It's not necessarily the match you want, but trust and believe for a variety of reasons, it is the match we need. If the WWE wants to make WrestleMania 33 go, if WWE wants to make WrestleMania 33 work, if WWE wants to get all types of tremendous reaction via social media during and after the event, there is only one option. There is only one match that could potentially save the day. And if you put that one linchpin into place, every other thing else kind of falls into place. And now some of you might sit there and say, well, that's got to be Undertaker versus John Cena. Or that might be Triple H versus Shane McMahon. Or that might be Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal title. That ain't any of that shit. There is only one match. And again, it's not necessarily the match you want. But deep, deep down in the cockles of your heart and soul, you know it's the match you need, damn it. And while it may have happened 900 damn times before, I assure you, come WrestleMania, this time it counts, brother. We need Randy Orton versus John Cena for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 33. You damn right I just said that, and I mean every freaking word of it. I, I truly do. Look past the smirk on my face for just a second, if you will. I mean it. Think about, think about it from this standpoint. Cena and Orton, like it or not are the two biggest stars the company's had over the past decade plus that are still actively with the company. Because Batista ain't there, and he's not going to be there. John Cena, Randy Orton, two pillars of what the WWE have been for over a decade now. All of those years of investment and time and energy and resources into building these guys up into props, into placeholders, you know, Part of the Fortunate Four, obviously, pillars and bedrocks of the Breakfast Club and all the magnificence of ego and backstage politics that those two represent. The most ridiculous thing of all for this company, all of those years, where you had Hogan, Andre, Hogan, Savage, Hogan, Warrior, 
Austin Michaels, Austin Brett, Brett Sean, you know, Austin Rock, Triple H Michaels, Triple H, or yeah, Taker, Triple H, Taker Michaels. Sorry, I'm getting so worked up thinking about John Cena, Randy Orton, and WrestleMania that I can't contain myself. I'm losing myself right now. The one thing this company's never done is John Cena versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. And this is just madness. Sheer madness, lunacy, and ultimate stupidity. All of these years, you had these guys face off and feud so many times. They wrestled so many damn matches. And frankly, stunk up the joint all over the place. And not once did we ever think that, hey, this is the top star here, this is the top star here, this is the best that our company has at this moment in time in terms of name recognition and star power. Let's maybe have them square off at WrestleMania and see what the hell they can do. John Cena versus Randy Orton have never went one-on-one -on -one against each other at WrestleMania. John Cena and Randy Orton have never faced off in the main event of WrestleMania. Imagine during the Attitude Era never getting Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock. There seems something incredibly wrong with that. Imagine going back to WrestleMania 12 and not getting Brett versus Sean. Imagine going back to WrestleMania 3 and not having Hogan versus Andre. Again, there's something just incredibly wrong with this picture. And after all of these years, this company still hasn't done it. They blew their wad so many times with SummerSlam and other filler, kill, no killer type of crappy pay per views. Wasting these two guys, wasting these two in a feud against each other, wasting all of these matches that these guys have had over the years. And believe it or not, there are a lot of natural storytelling elements to having a Randy Orton versus John Cena at WrestleMania and have it be for the WWE Championship. Number one, these two guys are incredibly familiar with each other, so they know what the hell they can do, especially with Cena's recent expansion of offensive repertoire. These are the type of guys that could potentially go out there and in spite of the hijacking by the crowd and the reactions and everything else, could put on a WrestleMania-worthy type of match. At this stage of their career, I think they could. Furthermore, when you're talking about John Cena, now he's tied Ric Flair, he can start making that argument of being the greatest of all time, and you know the WWE's never going to have let you live it down. Here's Randy Orton, who's been a 12-time world champion. He's the number one contender. He's the Royal Rumble winner. And he could sit there and be jealous about why the hell does Cena get all of this and why has Cena gotten all this love over the years. And it's these two titans of the PG era, these two titans of the past decade plus of the decreased ratings era. They are in a position where you have all these natural elements that really work for a big type of WrestleMania grudge match. The one time they've ever technically faced off at a WrestleMania was what WrestleMania 24 and that triple threat with God. And I mean, while that was a piece of absolute magnificence in ego and backstage politicking and car positioning, you know, they ultimately paid the price for trying to follow up to what was it, Ric Flair and Shawn Michaels at 24. How did that work out? You even forget that these three faced off for the WWE title at WrestleMania 24, because it's all about Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels, and Taker and Edge in the main event. All of these years, and these two guys have never faced off one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. And I'm sorry. If there was ever a time to do it, it has to be now. If you're insistent upon not sending The Undertaker at John Cena, and you're not trying to make that the title match, and you want Undertaker and his dad bod to face off against the Samoan at WrestleMania, then so fucking be it. Let it happen. You want to be stupid like that? Do it. But you've got so many pieces in place for Randy Orton versus John Cena. Why the hell would you not go there? Why? Because you want Bray Wyatt to walk in the fucking champ at WrestleMania? Excuse the fuck out of me. A guy who doesn't win big matches, and I don't think has ever won a WrestleMania match, so he's got the reverse taker streak. We're all of a sudden going to treat him seriously? We're going to sit there and give him the freaking world title, and have him carry the title into WrestleMania? I'm sorry, but in my opinion, if you think Bray Wyatt is worthy of carrying a world title into WrestleMania, you're insane. Your world champions should be your top guys in the company. Your world champions should be your biggest stars in the company. Your world champions should actually feel like world champions. 
And in no way, shape, or form does Bray Wyatt measure up in any of those categories. Especially compared to a John Cena, especially compared to a Randall Keith Orton. You want to sit there and do Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, fine. You do that shit after fucking WrestleMania once him and John Cena are done. Bray Wyatt feels more like, and I've referenced this before, the June-July filler uh, or September-October filler world champion. The guy that you use as a transitional champion um, on your secondary pay-per-views when you really don't give a shit because you're just using the guy again to hold the place until you get somebody you actually give a fuck about to win the belt at one of the bigger shows. That's exactly the type of champ that Bray Wyatt is. And while you can sit there and say, well, then you just said, have him be the champ. Not at WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt, your world champion, heading into WrestleMania? Even if you want to go with the Wyatt family crap, at the end of the day, Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania feels like a world title match that's destined to open the show. And you can't open the show with the WWE Championship. That's just stupid. Randy Orton versus John Cena and all the storytelling elements that are in place and the names that are involved, like it or not, it's not about what you want. It's about deep down what you need. Is damn near WrestleMania main event worthy? And I feel much more confident about that match closing out the show than I would Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal title. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. And from a selfish standpoint, just imagine for all of you, and the WWE as well. Imagine all the glorious Breakfast Club related content you could get between now and the road to WrestleMania if we got Randy Orton versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. You think I've done some wonderful, incredible things before in reference to God and his guaranteed WrestleMania spot? Well, I guarantee you this much, bitches, you haven't seen a damn thing yet. You give me a clear-cut path to Randy Orton versus John Cena at WrestleMania 33 and watch the video-making magic come back to OTRS. I promise you that much. WWE, I know maybe you're concerned that fans will boo it out of the building, but frankly, if it's not one of your vanilla fucks, they're probably going to boo and shit on it most frankly any damn ways. And you already set up Undertaker versus Roman Reigns, so clearly you don't care how about the reaction Roman Reigns is going to get at your year's biggest show? Why the hell would you care about this? Furthermore, when you look at your other potential world title match, is Brock Lesnar going against the WWE Universal Champion of Goldberg? How do you think that match could potentially play out if that's going to be the one that you ultimately have as your linchpin as the main event of WrestleMania 33? I mean, it's insane. And to me, again, it might not be the match you want. It's the match you need. And I assure you, after 900 times, this time counts. And, and you'll get it, and you'll see it. And I beg the WWE, and I implore the WWE, as you, 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 you should too. We really need this. We need it bad. I need it bad. Oh, so bad. Like, I can feel it in my plums bad. That's how bad I need this shit. And you know what? If the WWE screws the pooch on this and they insist with going with John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice and wasting Cena and The Miz at Mania, and they insist on going with Randy Orton challenging Bray Wyatt for the championship, and they waste Randy Orton at this show, then they deserve whatever the hell they get. And you know what I'm going to do in response? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bitch about it on Twitter. Relentlessly. Savagely. During WrestleMania 33. Then, when it comes to the WrestleMania 33 review, I'm going to bitch and piss and moan about it incessantly. Incessantly. And you don't want that WWE. You don't want me bitching and moaning about it on Twitter. You don't want me bitching and moaning about it on YouTube. You want to know why? Because it will be doing absolutely nothing to change anything about anything that just freaking happened. But it's going to make me feel good. So that's what I'm going to do. And then you know what I'm going to do? After I post the WrestleMania 33 review, where I have hence partaken in the clowning of you for this ridiculousness and stupidity, 
I'm going to continue to bitch about it on Twitter. And you know what I'm going to do that next night? I'm going to sit my funky ass on my couch and I'm going to watch the Raw after WrestleMania. That'll teach you. And that'll show WWE, won't it? You don't want this, WWE. You don't want this. We need it. You need it. I need it. You, 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 you need it. We have to have it. Randy Orton versus John Cena at WrestleMania 33. WWE, I'm getting down on my hands and knees. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. We need it. We got to have it. Randy Orton versus John Cena can save WrestleMania. And at the end of the day, this is what matters. It's Randy Orton. It's John Cena. It would further validate once and for all that the Breakfast Club rules bitches and will always rule. To sit there and waste them in mixed tag matches and title matches against Bray Wyatt is an inappropriate allocation of Breakfast Club resources. They deserve better, they demand better, and frankly, we do too. Please, WWE, you have no idea how bad I need this. Like I said, I can feel it in my plums. And if you don't want to feel it in the plums, you'll give me this match at WrestleMania.